What's going on y'all and welcome on in. Hope everyone's been doing well. I apologize for the lack of videos. I'm only doing like one or two a week now when I used to do one almost every day. Um, but I promise we got a lot more coming up. So stay tuned at the end. I'll tell y'all some of my ideas or stuff that I want to continue on. But today let's go in and talk about the potion or excuse me, the bottle of knowledge found in the powder shop. It does look like a potion put on the screen. And um, these are very, very rare items. And it's a lot of it's the talk of the town lately because of Rengar's drink, because of limited artifacts like, um, let's say, Samurai Seria coming out soon. And then, of course, guys, fingers crossed, the C word, the collab, I'm assuming will come as well with um, a lot more limited artifacts, too. So bottle knowledge is something you want to know about. You know, we're going to talk about where to get them, how often they come around, and in my opinion, the best uses for them as of right now. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Thank you for watching. And... Um, yeah, much love, guys. Alrighty, y'all. Let's go in and talk about the item that I get asked about most recently, and for good reason. And I think that would be the bottle of knowledge. So let's head to the powder knowledge shop. And here we can see on the bottom left-hand corner, guys, it says powder knowledge shop list, 15 days until refresh. So there's always a timer, but I think the max, when this rotates, after this 15 days end, it's going to be another rotation for 45 days, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. But I'm pretty sure that's what they've kind of been using, or that's the time frame they've been doing for uh, a long while now. So that means we can get a bottle of knowledge every 45 days. And, and let's go ahead and talk about bottle of knowledge real fast. What does it do? It limit breaks a 5-star artifact only. You can't use it on 4-star artifacts. Good. You really shouldn't, considering how rare it is, right, guys? Over a month per bottle of knowledge. And if we want to, let's use Rengar's special drink here as an example. Um, let's say you picked one up through summons. Congrats guys. A lot of y'all told me how your summons went I'm so happy for y'all if you got a little unlucky. Hey, it happened to me too. My heart goes out to you But let's say you picked up one through summons or through powder. We want to get five more right to max limit break it. Well, that would be uh, Five times What is that 1.5 months? So it's gonna take I think seven and a half months to get five more bottles to max limit break a Rengar's drink or any artifact really if you needed five if you needed six right add, add another month and a half to that but that just i'm just kind of trying to show you how rare these are now it's easy to get 240 powder you know just watch my powder guide um per every uh one and a half months but if you wanted to max limit break some of these su such powerful artifacts you know you do need to start saving these over time so use them wisely i'll go ahead let's go ahead and talk about um, the top three, I think, that you should go for, okay? So, anything else we need to cover before we talk about the exact artifacts? 240 powder, 1.5 months. I believe that's it. All right, so guys, with how rare they are, let's talk about the top three artifacts, in my opinion, that I think you should use these on. Let's start with number one, meaning the most, the highest priority, and it might surprise you guys, it's not going to be drink. That's not going to be number one. Let's go ahead, head over to the journal and the artifact journal. And let me tell y'all the number one artifact, I think, if you're a PvPer, that you should go ahead and limit break first. Now, before I talk about these, you're going to notice what does Guiding Light and Rengar's Drink have in common? Well, they're both limited artifacts. Guiding Light came with Cerise, and Rengar's Drink comes with Seaside Bologna. I, in my honest opinion, boys, I think you should only use these bottles on limited artifacts. I know some of you out there are going to want to use it on your Lexus Basket, your Sigurd Scythe, your Elvis Ritual Sword, whatever five-star artifact is out there however you know you can get them at discounted rates for 180 powder each as you just saw last rotation so uh you know a couple months ago we had basket in the shop it was much cheaper and if you guys can just wait for those you're going to be able to pick up non-limited artifacts much easier at a discounted rate so i think you should really save your bottles for limited artifacts first and foremost okay but that being said guiding light i think is number one and let's talk about why all right, guys, so it comes with Cerise, and if you've been playing any PvP at all, you know how dang powerful this artifact is. It'll make your Landy, your Operator Cigarette, any Ranger that you want to protect. After it got buffed, it guaranteed gives your unit stealth for one turn at the start of the battle. That is huge. That means your Landy can't be targeted by Falcon or Clurries, can't be one-shot by Assassin Sids, whatever. She can't be targeted at the start and at the end of the, their turn. And for Landy's turn, she, she gets to have a chance to proc this twice if you Soul Burn her. Um, they have a 70% chance at max limit break. This is why we want this bottle maxed, guys, because it's only 35% chance at level 1, and then it doubles at max limit break. So any, anywhere in between that, right, we want to reach the max percent. But regardless, if you can't meet, reach the max, you want to get as high as possible if you're an avid PvPer and you use Rangers because it's such a powerful snowball mechanic that if you do happen to proc that extra stealth 
and your your DPS carry, your Landy stays in stealth for another two turns. Oftentimes, guys, that wins you the match. Or as you know, if you're on the other side, that'll lose you the match if your opponent is lucky enough to keep procking that stealth. Okay? So this is why, in my opinion, Guiding Light, if you're a PvPer, is the number one artifact um, by far. Okay? So let's go ahead and talk about number two. And as you all know, I think everyone here knows now what I'm going to talk about here. But for a lot of similar reasons, we have Rengar's Drink. This is my number two recommended Max Limit Break artifact. I say number two only because it's, uh, I think in my honest opinion, the main use for it is Seaside Bologna and then Yuna Secondary. I know there's like Faithless Lytica and Bryceria, but I think those are less use, those are more niche kind of fun uses. And the main two would be just primarily Seaside Bologna, really. And then Yuna, if you really like Yuna, those are actually good for them. Unlike Guiding Light, where it's almost a mandatory must have for that, for a lot of those Rangers that want to be protected. Um, yeah, I think Rengar's special drink in exchange is kind of just must have for one, and then maybe we count Yuna too. So let's talk about Rengar's drink. You know, I don't need to talk about it too much. A lot of y'all pulled for it, and, um, you know, you saved up your powder, you got it. As you know, 50% chance at level 1, 75% chance at level 15, and then 100% chance at max limit break. Um, another thing I didn't mention, guys, is just, you know, whenever you max limit break artifacts, especially 5-star artifacts, never discount the amount of free stats you get, boys and girls, okay? I know, like, when you're min-maxing, a lot of times you forget about the artifact stats, and a lot of y'all neglect and leave your artifacts, you know, not maxed out. Well, it's a lot harder with limited artifacts, of course. We don't have bookmarks to pull unlimited unless we're whaling. Um, that's why these bottles are very useful, especially for limited artifacts. But you get a lot of its free attack. You get a lot of free health. It's It adds up, and it's a big, big bonus. So it's another reason you want to save for these limited artifacts that you know you'll be using. So Guiding Light and now Rengar's Drink. But um, let's say we only have a Rengar's Drink at, at level 15. So one copy, 75% chance. That means you have a 25% chance on... Uh, Rengar's Drink to just not do its AoE uh, additional damage, which is big, 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 uh, you know, miss potential on doing damage. So we want to get as many copies as possible, 1.5 months per bottle. If you only were able to get one Rengar's Drink, which is not a problem, guys. That's what I did. I did the same exact thing. I was only able to pick up one Rengar's Drink last time around, and I had to bottle five of them into this uh, artifact. So it's going to happen to you, some of y'all watching. Just cap it out if you really like SSB right now, Seaside Bologna. Um, you could use this before Guiding Light. Um, let's say you don't have Guiding Light. This would be number one on the list, okay? But this is another one where RNG or you want to max it because of the chance percent, all right? And the third artifact we're going to talk about doesn't have this chance potential. So the third limited artifact, guys, let me know if you know what I'm about to bring up here. In my opinion, this would take the number three spot, and that would be Draco Plate. Some of y'all that are newer or returning... You may have missed this completely because we haven't seen it in a while. This comes along with the Luna banner. So if you weren't playing during the Luna banner or haven't played ever since the Luna banner, uh, you may have completely missed this, and that's okay. Get it when it comes out soon, and then save some extra bottles uh, if you have them, if you do think you like warriors. All right, so this is a warrior exclusive artifact, and let's go ahead and talk about what it does. Um, increased critical hit damage as well as decreasing damage suffered. So it's a two-parter that's just really nice for warriors, right? A lot of warriors are bruiser. They want to do more damage. They also want to be tankier. And this is just a very nice artifact for that. Another really nice thing about it, guys, is unlike skill effects or buffs, the Draco Plate crit damage can go above the the 350% uh, cap. So don't worry about that too much. Uh, it is unique in that regard. The decreased damage... Suffered, you know, when we increase it, it won't stack with items like Adamant Shield that do a similar damage reduction effect. However, it will stack with items, or excuse me, um, damage sharing effects like Aureus or units that can damage share, uh, like Crimson Armin. All right. So a very, very powerful, versatile artifact that gives a big, big uh, boost to damage and survivability. Um, and by the way, guys, let me, can I mention this real fast? I always ask y'all, guys, the character in this artifact is Francesca, who I think is Cecilia's uh, mom. Ant? Something like that. Let me know, would you guys like her as a playable character in the near future? Because I know for damn sure I would, guys. One of my most wanted, I think. She just looks so cool. Uh, yeah, you guys know Car. Alright, anyways, this would be number three, Draco Plate. Um, very versatile, very powerful. Damage reduction, damage boost. This would be my number three for boosting, or excuse me, using your bottom knowledge is on, okay? Now, let me just briefly cover the rest of the limited artifacts, guys. You have items like Unfading Memories. This came with DN. It's very weak compared to Rod of Amaryllis. You really, I don't think many people use this for the most part. Um, you have uh, Fairytale Tenebria's artifact. 
which gives damage. It does have some uses here and there, but not really something you're aiming to use Bottle of Knowledges on. And then um, you have Holiday Euphine's Artifact Champion Trophy. This one I have maximally broken. I was trying to test it. It really doesn't feel that good, guys. At least it doesn't have a spot right now, so I would hold off on that. And then I think the last one, let me know if I missed any guys, but the last one I believe is a Wall of Order from Landy. And this one can be good. Um, I do know some people that like using it. However, I think most people are running their Landys on either like Proof of Valor for your counter or the typical build. You really want like Guiding Light to make sure she doesn't get hit. So if you did, we're using this on some other Rangers, maybe like Operator Sigurd or something. It is a nice one to uh, to boost up, but uh, it I don't think it cracks the top three, not even close. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. I actually intended for this video to cover Unknown Slates and Potion of Ascensions as well, but... I, uh, we had too much to talk about for bottom knowledge, so I think this is a nice uh, time frame to cut it at. Um, but for future reference, I'll make another video on Unknown Slates as well and Potion Ascension. Don't forget, we still got the most needed buffs for Earth, Ice, Dark, and Light units. I have account reviews coming for y'all soon, so my YouTube family, keep, you know, stay posted. I got y'all. And let me know also in the comments below if you guys want to see um, some clips or maybe just some footage from when my fiance rated a lot of the, uh, she made a tier list for looks for, uh, the updated units in epic 7 so let me know if y'all want to see that as well okay guys a lot of stuff for y'all thank you so much as always for watching and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out everybody